life. I've only got a few minutes left, and this is what we're going to go through. That word is, these letters is M-I-N-E, mind. Somebody say that, say mind. Mind. Very simple revelation, but I, I, I'll talk about it. I've seen it in my son. And many times the things I preach is the stuff that comes to me. I was watching my son and how he operates. And young people are very selfish. And when he grabs something, I don't care whose it is, he says, mine. He'll get the remote. I said, get it, daddy. Get daddy the remote back. Mine. He'll grab some food off my plate. Mine. Just as selfish as he want to be, but there's a revelation in there. If you finally realize what is mine, it'll change how you handle the situation. I, I, I'm not going to di get divorced because this relationship is mine. I'm not going to quit on DT because DT is mine. I can't give up because what I'm going through, it still is mine. The peace in my hand is mine. When you know what you possess, everybody can't take it away from you without saying it is him, I, him, he, it's mine. That deliverance is mine. That joy is mine. That peace is mine. That money is mine. Devil, you can't take this one away. That boy that's acting crazy, he still is mine. That girl who may be prostituting right now, she still is mine. you possess, you cannot wrestle it away from me. Yes. I don't need God to show up and take everything that the devil's doing to me. I know some stuff are simply mine. Yes. Oh, yes. 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 That's a revelation. Yes. It's mine. Yes. That joy, what I need is mine. Yes. Yes. And when you have that revelation, it'll revolutionize what you're going through. Yes. I may be going through now, but I realize victory is yes. mine. Yes. Victory, victory today is mine. I told Satan, get me behind. Victory today is what? Mine. Oh, M-I-N-E, it's mine. Oh, yeah, I feel something right here. We're coming to the road. But it's mine. It belongs to me. My bank account may not look like I want it to look like, but it still is mine. Listen, that car may not be the car you want to drive, but it still is mine. I may be tying up the bumper, I may be having to put a bunch of gas in it, but it still is mine. So devil, you can't have it, you can't make me feel bad about it, because it's mine. I preach prosperity, but I want you to understand something. Prosperity is not based on what you drive and what you have. That's a result of it, but you better be prosperous even if you're riding the bus. Because prosperity is still in mind because of what Jesus has done on the cross. And I made my mind, if it never materialized on this side of heaven, I will not stop saying it's mine. Because when I get up there, I'll be walking on streets of gold. So whether I get it now or whether I get it later, it still is mine. But I believe it's, I believe it's mine here, too. I believe it's mine here, too. But I made it to remind God. I'm not loving you because of what you can give me. All right. If you don't do it the way I want you to do it, you still are mine. Yeah. My, God, my God, my God. I love Jesus. If you listen to him, many times he said, my God. He made God his personal God. Yeah. Yeah. Look on the cross. He said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I ain't blaming my wife for it. I ain't blaming my job. God, I'm talking to you. You're the only one that can get me out of this. Come on. All right, I got to come to a close. Second Samuel 23, starting at verse 8. I'm just going to read the first clause of verse 8. Say amen if you have it. Amen. And tell somebody, say, it's mine, it's mine. It's mine, it's mine. I got to tell you, the song of songs that what God has for me, it's it mine. is for me. You can't take it from me. It belongs to me. It's mine. Oh, yeah, it's mine, it's mine, it's mine. It'll change how you handle your situation. It'll change how you get up in the morning when you realize it's mine. Yeah. Hallelujah. Another time I got to let my friend. Got to come to the close. All right, that's six minutes. The scripture said that David mighty men, these be the names of the mighty men who David had. One scripture said these were the men that were in debt, they were discontent, they were in despair. God
God don't always use the best looking folk with the best credit history. He finds somebody that will trust and believe him. All right. God don't always need a Bill Gates to bless you. He needs somebody that will just trust God. Yeah. So let's drop down to verse 9. I, I, I got to touch on something for verse 9. For all you people that grew up without a father. Or have a father and he ain't worth a dime. Verse 9 says, and after him was Eleazar, the son of a dodo. Stop right there. Your daddy may be a dodo, but that don't mean you still aren't a mighty man. <laughs> His daddy was named dodo, but he still found himself with the mighty man. Right. Your daddy may not be worth a dime. Your mama may not be worth a dime, but this life is still is mine. Yeah, right. Don't care what you've been through. Don't care who's done what they've done to you. It still belongs to you. Yeah. It is mine. So we're going to go down, and this is where I want to finish up right here. First, 11, it says, and after him was Shammah, the son of Ag the Haramite, and the Philistines were gathered together into a troop. There was a piece of ground full of lentils, and the people fled from the Philistines. Verse 12, but he stood, told about Shammah, in the midst of the ground, and defended it, and slew the Philistines, and the Lord wrought a great victory. Yes. That word lentils really means beans or peas. Everybody ran because those were beans and peas ain't much. But Shammah said, they may not be much to you, but they my peas. Yes. And since they're my peas and my beans, I don't care how many enemies are coming, I'm going to stand here and fight. Yes. Your wife may not look like Halle Berry, but fight for her in the house because she's yours. Your husband may not be built like Denzel, but he belongs to you. Fight for him anyhow. Your child may not be smart as Einstein, but fight for him anyhow. Because it's your child. It's mine. So Shama said, I'm going to stand and I'm going to fight. I don't care who's coming against me. I'm standing and I'm fighting. Because these little bees, they belong to me. This little raggedy car I'm riding, it belongs to me. This bus pass I got in my pocket, it may not be a lot to you, but it belongs to me. It's mine, it's mine, it's mine. So I fight for it. And when you look in, I believe the Hebrew, the actual word Shammah means God is with us. There's a name called Jehovah Shammah. So it looked like he was fighting by himself, but he had a whole army with him because he stood and fought. But the Bible doesn't say that, that, that God moved in front of the battle, but God helped him fight the battle. You may be standing and you may be fighting, but God is on your side. And at the end of the verse, it says, the Lord wrought a great victory. All I'm asking is when you come out, don't take credit for your education. Don't take credit for your job and your money. Don't take credit for your Lexus and your Mercedes. Stand up and say, God did it for me. It was God that brought me out. It was God that made a way. It was God that helped me out. It was God. Let's stand to our feet.